Good morning. I want to welcome you in. I'm Pastor Sharon Pizzo from Son of Riches Methodist Church. And we are on Zoom this morning. The message that uh, the Lord had placed on my heart is called No Turning Back. And it's based on Genesis 19 uh, verse, verses 15 through 26 and Luke chapter 17, 19 through 33. If you want to go back and take a look at those scriptures, I would completely tell you to do so. So this morning, let's think about this as we ponder the word together. How successful are we when we attempt to walk in a forward direction, but look backward? I can recall when my son was an infant learning to walk. He tended to walk in a forward direction, but kept his head and his eyes looking in all different places. And he would tend to stumble and fall and usually walk into a wall. Ouch. And as a mom, the minute he got up to walk, I was usually running very closely behind him, trying to get him to look up, to pay attention, and to stop looking behind. My parental heart's cry was to keep his eyes ahead, steady, not looking back, so he wouldn't fall and he wouldn't crash. Can you hear, beloved, your heavenly father whisper, look up, child, and don't look back. See, this too can mirror our Christian walk, especially in this mixed up and wicked culture we're all swimming in these days. Things are changing at such a fast pace that what we once knew and understood to be bad is now good. And what was once good is now considered evil. This is an indicator of the times we're living in and how much we need to keep a gaze upon Jesus Christ, because the minute we take our eyes off the sa our Savior, we get lost, spun around, and we will crash into a wall or even drown in the sea. Amen? Prayerfully, we won't turn into a pillar of salt. So let us pray for the word this morning. Bow your heads. Lord, reveal your truth into our soul this morning. Help us as you strengthen us in this hour to see you, to walk rightly, adjust our sight, Clean out our ears so we can receive your personal word with clarity and concisely to our rendered hearts. Father, transform us this morning. Pierce our hearts and our minds, O God, as we hear you speak. In Jesus' name, amen. So if we look at the history of where this piece of verse took place, this was the literal melting down of Sodom and Gomorrah which was an evil and wicked place filled with perversity, unthinkable brutality, and ungodliness. We find in this verse of scripture where Lot was under siege to the rage of men of this perverted city to seek his male household for an orgy of rape. Not the easiest of scriptures to preach on, but necessary to lift up this word. Lot's intention was to save these two men or angels that appeared. He had them remain in his house and not in the time of night or even in the open plaza of the city because Lot knew the lewdness and the depravity of the acts of the neighboring men. But then they found themselves surrounded and the violent and bloodthirsty mob wanted those visiting men to be known by them which the scripture says. That term, when you see that in scripture, usually refers to sexual relations between a man and a woman. Here it's referring to the act of homosexuality. Lot in verses 19, six through nine, cowardly offers to them his two unmarried daughters as substitute, which in and of itself is shocking and somewhat inexcusable. Yet his main intent here was to safeguard these two visiting angels. But the reaction of this mob only confirms and embeds the wickedness of their intention, of the true evil natures of their intentions. See, they had no interest, but only in the two men that were staying with Lot. The angels in verse 11 struck with blindness the men who were at the entrance of the house as they wore themselves out groping for the door. Now, they were not only spiritually blind, but also in the physical realm. See, they couldn't see or decipher right from wrong. So let's breathe here for a moment and let me flesh this out to you this morning, church. See, being in a culture so evil, your measurement scale of how one perceives 
and uses logic even becomes skewed to the evil and the toxicity you're residing within. What our so social norms become a testament to and what we turn in alignment with, which can happen in a snap of a finger and a nuanced motion. That Lot thought sacrificing his own flesh and blood, his own daughters would be a worthy offering than that what they were urgently seeking after. See, when we turn our backs on God to look at what we've grown attached to, now we have the propensity to form a soul connection with, um, with different things. We then have released the hope and hold of the gospel truth. We posture in opposition of a call to obedience before the Lord and to what scripture calls wholeness and holiness. See, beloved, you can't have one foot in heaven and one foot in hell. Amen. I know we've heard this before. Soul ties are not a biblical principle. Yet we can see how our souls can be affected by others. Pastor and counselor Mark Ballinger says a soul tie is a re relational attachment to someone else that affects the immaterial parts of someone else. How many times have you heard of a person being involved in an abusive relationship and they can't break free? It is the unhealthy tie of one to another that keeps them bound, further broken and further abused. And that is the deceit of the environment that the predator keeps them down, confused and feeling unworthy. So they remain even until they leave that relationship so tattered and some never leave and instead go to a grave that some still look back on the hopes of that person changing. Our souls should be knitted as united to Christ and Christ alone. Somebody say amen. Unfortunately, this is a common tale of a thread that we buy the lie of social structures we live in today. The scale of measuring what we think as bad in comparison to what others are doing just blurs the lines even deeper. God calls sin, sin, no better no worse, just sin. And we are all sinners, as that is why we all need a savior. Hallelujah. James 2.10 tells us, for whoever keeps the whole law, but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. See, we serve a God who redeems us as he forgives our transgressions, as we die in our baptism, drowning to self, to be resurrected in the purity of Christ in the light of a new rebirth. We need not to attach ourselves or our souls to things that we will eventually have to detach or wean or flee from. But once we tie a knot to the veracity of wickedness, demonic behaviors and evil captivity, it can become insidious as a choking root that has a grip on us. Faith points us in a forward direction, beloved. Everything else will only lean us in backsliding motion. Might we never ever forget Lot's wife, who if you notice was unnamed, but her destiny was infamous enough leads us as a poignant reminder not to turn back from our profession of our faith. Be encouraged today, beloved. God has a better life, option, landscape, plan and purpose for your life. Trust, beloved, and don't gaze backward. Our creator is the holy architect of our created design. The world might appear to have it all together. And my Lord, if we are really in dire straits, we might even believe that today. But it will fade and it will disappear one day. God is everlasting. His love will never fail. Come on, somebody. His promises are ever eternal. Jesus is the antidote and he is all we ever need. Amen. Then verses 1919 tells us that because of Lot's loving kindness and mercy, God has found favor with him. See, God could have destroyed the city of Sodom with no word to Lot or even Abraham. But because Lot's eyes were fixed on God, his virtues and laws, the angels of the Lord grabbed Lot and his family and brought them forcibly to safety. In this passage, Lot appears weak, indecisive 
and unsure of whether he even wants to be rescued. Sounds like somebody beaten down by what they've had to deal with in all those years of all that was swimming around him. Can anybody resonate to that this morning? Come on. However, in the New Testament, 2 Peter 6 through 7, the Apostle Peter speaks a good word for Lot's character, calling him and saying, and if he rescued Lot, a righteous man who was distressed by the depraved conduct of the lawless, for that righteous man living among them day after day was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard. Beloved. God sees you in your torment of this day. And our day of rescue recedes closer and closer each day. Say amen. That is the good news of the gospel, beloved. Verse 9 states that if this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to hold the unrighteous for punishment on the day of judgment. I want to say that again because I want you to catch this, okay? This is the word of God, that the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to hold the unrighteous for punishment on the day of judgment. Trust that our day of deliverance will come out of these days of lawlessness. Beloved, keep your eyes on Jesus and don't look back or fall prey to the culture and tone of this day. Let not desperation be your guiding light, but Jesus is your only spilled restoration, especially now. Children of God, we carry the light in this season, and it's a light that's not going to be so much a light in the day, but it's going to be a light in the dark. Can somebody say amen? The Lord then rained down brimstone which was flaming sulfur and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from heaven. It was clear then and now, as we read this, that the destruction was a judgment from God. And that was all under his control. Catch this. For those in fear that God has no idea about what's occurring on earth, which he created, God knows it all. God sees it all. And God is good. So many question in this hour, why God, why God? There are gonna be some things this side of eternity, beloved, we are not gonna have answers to. And that's where our faith walk needs to come in so strong, where we need to trust and believe that God's plan is good, even when everything around us feels like it's crumbling. Even when we don't understand what's happening, we need to not say so much why, but how. How could I be effective in this hour? Lord, what could I do? Lord, send me. Lord, help me to pray harder. Help me to bleed deeper, Lord. Be with me in this hour and God never leaves us and he never forsakes us. Amen. Someone needs to hear that this morning. Praise the Lord. But Lot, Lot's wife, what happened? She looked back foolishly, longingly. She was attached to her sin in an act of disobedience and became a pillar of salt Commentators tell us that near the Dead Sea, which is believed to now cover the site which once was Sodom and Gomorrah, there are numerous rock formations, including pillars about the size of humans. Jesus referred to the fate of Lot's wife as a historical fact. And in Luke 17, 32, which says, remember Lot's wife. Lot's wife represents those who are attached to earthly things, those whose hearts are still not just in the world, but of the world, entwined with sin. Like Lot's wife, such a people will perish. Don't hold on to the alluring desires, worldly attractions, and groupthink beliefs. If they do not line up with the plumb line and the word of the Lord, dispose immediately. It's like that old adage, and I know you may have even said this to your kids. If everybody else is jumping off the cliff, are you going to go jump off the cliff too? <laughs> we are virtually experiencing many jumping off very high cliffs and living off some dangerous rails. Amen. Our Bible should be the plumb line to the way in which we conduct our lives, our actions, and our reactions in all aspects of our daily life. Or beloved, we will perish by our choices as God has given us free will. Use it wisely. Pray for each decision unceasingly. 
Seek holy discernment above all else. Beloved, be mindful of your social circles and spheres of influence, especially in this hour. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14 reminds us, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. I know I want to be found on the narrow path, and I know that I can't do it by myself. And we need to invite Jesus Christ into every struggle that we are in right now, beloved. Can somebody say amen? Scream it where you are, because I think I could hear your spirits yelling at me this morning. Come on. This is such an on-time word with an on-time story for us to glean in this hour when everything seems to be contorted perverted, distorted, and confusing, where good and bad have been twisted that Christians can't glean which way to go and what to follow. Others misleading the people of God and contextualizing the word and being led astray by false prophets. Be vigilant. Be sober. Beloved, be aware. Follow Jesus. Take the narrow pathway to finding him, which leads to a promise of eternal life. Amen. Now, as the cities are burning, and this is literal, if you ever watch what's actually happening in some of our cities today, don't turn around in desiring what was, even from your past. If you were saved, you are a new creation in Christ. Leave and move from what was, was to what will be and whose you belong to in this hour. Amen. Trust as the world has nothing good to offer. Christ is good. Jesus Christ is essential. Amen. God is sovereign and the Holy Ghost indwells the believer as a holy navigator for our destinations. Beloved, we don't have to do it alone. We choose to do it alone. That is a word from the spirit right now. Somebody needs that this morning. Read your word. Disciple one another, or have someone that is mature in the Lord disciple you, spread the gospel, amen, since this is the only good news that this perishing world needs to be offered as we are children of God. Don't look back, but forward in these days ahead. See, when we gaze back, we fail to see Jesus. We are then taken from the blessings and the mercy and the protection that comes from following God exclusively, and we become left to our own defense in our choice of vices and devices. Whether we realize it, we choose our independence separate from God and all that goes with it rather than our dependence on the Lord, our savior, our redeemer, and our protector, amen? Let our sins be filled with the pungent aroma of sulfur that we run to the throne room of grace to be, to be washed in the living waters of the Holy Spirit. I want you to be encouraged. God is on the throne and his hand of mercy is upon those who call upon his name. Amen. You know this song. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. Let this be your guttural response in this hour. Psalm 8410 tells us, for a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper. Come on, Lord, in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Father, let us pray. Lord, engrave this message into our hearts and into our minds today. Lord, give us the peace that we need to see you and the ability, Father, to hear you in this hour. Let us hear your mercy cry from your blood that was spilled on Calvary's cross. And Father, let us wash and wear those robes of righteousness that you have placed upon us, O God. Lord, let us find you through the crimson twine, O Lord, that is now surrounds our heart as we call upon your name. Lord, in this hour, we ask you to strengthen us, be with us, 
guide us. Holy Spirit, help us. God, creator, call us ever closer to you as your creation. And Jesus, let us always invite you into every struggle and never walk this journey alone. That instead of looking forward, we unfortunately choose to gaze back. In Jesus' name, amen. For the benediction and sending forth, go now. Wait and work for the coming of the day of God. In the wild places, prepare a straight path for the Lord. Lead lives of holiness and godliness. Strive to be found at peace and speak freely of the Lord's comfort and promise. May Christ Jesus reconcile justice and peace within you. And may the Holy Spirit baptize you into the life of God. We go in peace to love and joy to serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we say amen. Thank you.